Hi, this is Martha Moody. We are on week two, part two, on page 18 of the lecture notes. When I left off on the last video, we just worked this problem right here. As you can see, all the terms are positive terms. So what I'd like to do is to work an example for you where some of the terms are positive and some of the terms are negative. So again, you can see here on the top row we have three terms, and on the second row we have three terms. So we're going to treat this like a long multiplication problem. So I'm going to take the minus 3, and I'm going to multiply it by each and every term on the top row. So minus 1 times, I'm sorry, minus 3 times minus 1 is positive 3, so I write it down here. Minus 3 times minus 2x is a positive 6x, and minus 3 times 3x to the second is minus 9x to the second. Then I go ahead and I take my next term, which is a positive 1x, and I multiply that by every term on the top row. So um, positive 1x times negative 1 gives me minus 1x, and I line it up underneath the 6x. I take x times negative 2x, which is going to be a negative 2x to the second power. And then the last multiplication I do is 1x times 3x to the second, which gives me a 3x to the third. I go on to my third term over here. I take x squared times every term on the top row. So x squared times negative 1 gives me minus 1x squared. x squared times minus 2x gives me a minus 2x to the third, where I'm adding those exponents. And then the last multiplication I do is the x squared times the 3x squared, which is going to give me 3x to the fourth. I draw my line then, and I add, and then here's the result that I had. So typically what I do when I do these multiplications, I'm pretty confident that I'm multiplying my numbers right, like 3 times 3 and so on. But what I want to do is just check my signs. So I go back here and I go minus times a minus is a plus. Minus times a minus is a plus. Minus times a positive is a negative. And I go through the entire problem that way. So my next sign is a positive times a negative for a negative a positive times a negative for a negative here, and a positive times a positive gives me a positive over here. That just gives me the reassurance that I have the terms with the correct signage in between them before I go ahead and add them. So in this example, again, I had three terms times three terms. I had nine multiplications, um, and the long multiplication method works for any number of terms that you have. So what I'd like you to do is to pause the video and try this problem right here. On the top row, you have um, three terms, and on the bottom row, you have two terms. So you're going to have three times two multiplications, or six, and the answer is going to follow this. Okay, if you try to go ahead and work this, then the first thing that you did was take the 2y times everything on the top row, and you should have ended up with um, the x to the fourth y squared minus 14x squared y squared plus 6y squared. And then you're going to take um, the minus 3x to the second y in the turquoise and multiply it by every term on the top row. And then that would give you this corresponding line right here. After that, you draw your line and you combine the terms that are like. They're already matched up for us, so you don't have to go ahead and match those up. They're already in the appropriate form. Um, so that's the long multiplication way. Um, a lot of you may have learned another way in um, high school of writing out these problems in a linear manner, where you use the distributive property basically, and you would multiply 2 each two y by each of the three terms, and then you would multiply minus 3x squared y by each of the three terms. So it would look like this if you did that. And if you want to use that method on any of the problems, it gives you exactly the same results. If you've had this method and like it, um, then I certainly go ahead and use that method whichever way that you want. So for binomials, we've learned that we can work them with FOIL, we can work them with long multiplication, or we can work them in a linear fashion. So um, all of them are going to give you the same answer and the same results. It's just whichever method is the easiest for you. Um, and as always, if you have any questions um, or concerns about anything on the video, please let me know. Thank you.